and welcome to the first class of the Human Computer Interaction course. I am Luigi De Russis, and I will be the main teacher for this course. You will see me mostly in the lectures and sometimes in the labs also. And together with me, uh, there will be other two people that will follow mostly the, the laboratory hours that are Alberto Monge and uh, Tommaso Calò. Uh, two things to say before starting with this presentation. Um, uh, the first is an introduction, my introduction. So uh, again, I'm Luigi De Russis. I am a researcher here at the Department of Computer Control Engineer. And I work, I happen to work on human-computer interaction, so this happens to be uh, not only the course that I teach, but also the field in which I work in. And Tommaso and Alberto also work with me in this field, in different aspects on this field. And this was the first thing to say, since we, we will met for the entire semester, and probably with some of you we already met in the previous semester, uh, for those that does the Web Application One course, for those that did the Web Application One course last year. Um, I was one of the three teachers of this course. Um, the second thing is that, as you see, this room is quite full. Um, and this, this generated a few problems, actually. So this course, traditionally, this course started in 2019 with 80 students. 2020, 90 students. 2021, you can guess, 100, yeah, 110. We, we just uh, increased 20. So we were expecting 120, 30 students enrolled, and this room is for 120 people. Hmm? Uh, we discovered on Saturday, uh, Sunday uh, also, uh, that actually the first enrollment for this course are 170. This, from, the one, from, one end, uh, from one end, we are um, extremely happy, clearly, because this is an elective course, and so it may mean various things, but let me think that this means that it's an interesting course and you want to, to follow it. On the other side, we weren't prepared for 170. Not we, Politecnico, that is still not, but we as teacher organization. Um, so we changed a few things yesterday <laughs> to accommodate these uh, bigger numbers. And so that's also the reason why these slides were online just this morning, because we needed time to adjust a few things. So that was the, the first thing that I would like to say. The other thing is that uh, this course is uh, highly practical. We will ask you to work during the course, and not a lot for the exam, but during the course, yes. Um, you will see. In, in a few, let's say, in this hour. And this is the result also of the course that your colleagues in the past year, uh, of the things that your colleagues in the past year say that was good, and the things that say that they weren't good, so we try to adapt the course to, to fix problem, and hopefully not to generate more problems in while fixing. So this year we did a, a few changes in the course organization and structure that try to fix some of the problem that we noticed and your colleague noticed in the past years with some changes that hopefully will work well, uh, otherwise we will refine. Uh, just to tell you this, that we did some changes, we bet on, this, on these changes to, to, be, to be good, but as any change we don't know especially with these numbers, it's hard to know now. We, we go with our good sense, but we, we cannot really know now. So that is was a warning. Uh, so the style of the lectures will be, will be as much as interactive as possible, 
uh, I'm not, I have no idea to, I don't want to stay here, speak for 90 minutes. Uh, and you listen to me for 90 minutes, so I will ask you things sometimes, like now. Mm -hmm. So first questions. Uh, so before this, actually, how many of you are for compu from computer engineer? That's easy. Oh, quite a lot. That's normal. Uh, how many of you from data science? Okay. And uh, cinema and media engineering. Okay. Uh, then maybe you, you can stay for a moment after the class because the, actually this course is quite overlapped with another course that you have just to, to make you uh, aware of this. Okay. Second question. Expectation. So which are, briefly, the expectation that you have for this course? You choose this course because it's elective for everybody. It's not mandatory for nobody here. So which are your expectations? A few. What do you think uh, you hope to learn or you hope to do in this course? How to design a very good UI, hopefully. Yes. And then? So you pick the course because you like the name. <laughs> or the teacher, I don't know. Or what's the reason? So that's a good answer. Uh, to learn how to design a good user interface. At least other two or three, then we move on. Can you repeat? Designing uh, more accessible and uh, interfaces in general. Okay, partially. We will do partially that, but we will mention for sure. Okay. Anybody else? No? Okay, first question, second question done. So, uh, so the expectations were, were, were quite good, um, were quite aligned with the, with the actual course goal. So these are the, core, the goal of the course. Hmm? So from one side, you, we want to un make you understand how to design, how to create a user experience of interactive system that will have a user interface, maybe not just a graphical user interface, any kind of user interface uh, in, let's say, modern application. Also gaining in-depth knowledge of a process to do that, to create such system and how to apply this process in practice. And while doing that, becoming familiar and experimenting with methods to create such applications, to apply such process, and to understand which are the needs of people. And also learning to evaluate this system with user, with various kind of users. So designing, building, evaluating, understanding people are the four goals of this course. And you will see a lot of these four things repeated in the various parts of the course. So why we care, or we should care, about uh, human-computer interaction or human -centered, a human-centered approach to technology? So here there are two, two memes, but it's to make the point that in, in, many, in many courses that we did, also we teach, uh, we have a strong push towards technology. Hmm? So how many of you did the web application either in Italian or in English, from computer engineer, actually? Okay, so quite a lot. So in that course, 
do we ever speak about, do you ever heard speaking about people? Humans? Mm. If you think about data science, the tree of them, if you think about big data course or machine learning course, do you think about people? Do you ever heard in a lecture people? Probably not. Uh, so we, we would like to, to have this, to bring people back in the equation, let's say, because technology is, 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 can be useful. We should learn how to build technology, uh, but if technology is not used, useful, uh, risk to be useless. So the, the reason, uh, the typical reason is that with this, let's say, strong push of technology, we are sometimes more focused on features, like that one for the cat, uh, than not needs. And so we don't listen to, we don't know how to listen to user needs. And we just do as we think is the best thing to, to do. And with our technical background, most of the time. And so we are not typically the person for which we are creating a system. And if you think deeply, ultimately, all your system or your application are that you create, be an algorithm, be a, a web application, be a mobile application, a virtual reality application, whatever, is ultimately for people to be used. If it's something like a product, but also if it's an algorithm or a data analysis, those data typically or often came from people or from decision made by people. And you that created the, the design of the system of the algorithm, etc., are people and bringing that choices, your experience, your sensibility, your way of thinking. So it's already, people, it's already everywhere in this process, in a, let's say, software development process, in a data analytic process. It's just not make explicit. So we will try here to start from that technology push and say we would like to consider people. So this is clearly not a course that has a strong technology push. We will use technology to build something, to exemplify the process, but we don't care for, for this course which technology, how good it is, etc. We are more focused on the people part of the equation. So just to give you a concrete idea, uh, this is an actual user interface created by a developer. It's not fictional, it's actually existing. Um, and we will do this, let's say, game um, sometime uh, during the lecture, just not to have me speak for 90 minutes. Uh, that is called Hall of Fame, Hall of Shame. Hmm? So the question is, this interface, where do you put this interface? In the Hall of Fame of the best graphical user interface ever, or in the Hall of Shame of the graphical user interface? and why. So, but let's start from the, the question. Hall of Fame or Hall of Shame for this? Shame, that's a good starting point. <laughs> so this, is, this was easy, that was easy, that's clearly uh, Hall of Shame. So that is a person that decided, um, this person was using Vuget, the command line tool, Vuget a lot, and decided to create a user interface for that. And since we get us millions of options in common line, and this person was tired to remember by memory everything, he decided to put all the million um, options in a graphical user interface. Uh, with the results that probably that person, that is a developer, that know what to do, maybe that person is able to, to use this. Probably not a lot of other people. So this is clear a whole of shame because it's crowded. There's too much things. And where is, what's the, the point where you start using this? It's the URL here? No. Wrong tool. It's the URL here? 
or you have to write something here in this blank field? And what? It's mandatory? Which are the mandatory fields? Uh, I can accept uh, all and also TXT and JPEG. I can select that as they are checkbox. They allow multiple selection. So I can select it. I want to reject uh, zip file and all. And, and here, what's the starting point? Even if I understand how to, to write to use this, what's I'm going to write? To, to click start? Add or start or add? Who knows? Um, and if I press empty, what happens? And I don't want to imagine what is in the pro mode. <laughs> uh, because the clear, there is also pro mode because this is wasn't uh, enough. So this probably works, does what it needs to be done. It's not a problem of functionality. It has probably too much functionality in one page. But the point is not that it works, that has all the feature, but the point that is not usable at all for any probably other people except the person that created. And maybe also for the person that created it after one year without seeing this. So even if you know Vuget, you could have some trouble in in using this. Hmm? So this is a clear example of all of shame. But this is an extreme of the developer attitude hmm? that wants to do things, create things, and doesn't really think about who is the person that needs to use this specific tool. Hmm? And as, as I was saying, this is a game that we'll do sometime during the lecture. Seeing something and try to put it in the Hall of Fame, all of shame. This, was, this time was terribly simple to put it in the Hall of Shame. So we, how we can design and develop good interactive system or user interface uh, so to avoid building these and its cousins and its family of interfaces. Uh, so we need to keep in mind these things. It's an iterative and human-centered process we need to consider people's needs, not wants, but needs. Not what they say, but what they need. Some design principles, some guidelines, some usability goals, clearly. We need to prototype rapidly and iteratively. We need to evaluate with various kind of evaluation. We could have expert evaluation, we could have users and users evaluation, etc. And if we want to build something technologically, we also need to program, to develop in code. And these are the key elements that we also see during the course. We will follow an iterative process in which you will design, in which you will understand, then design, then evaluate, then prototype and evaluate, and then prototype again and evaluate again, and then prototype again and, and and that's it, because the semester is over. So we will prototype three times. So we will be, use this process iteratively as a, let's say, a golden standard. And we will learn the tools, the methods to do that. So what we will learn, specifically, we will have an introduction to human-computer interaction that is this week. Uh, then we will have all this process and all the methods related to the process to build interactive application with this human-centered process. That is one of the design process existing in the world, not the best one, one of the simplest. Hmm? Uh, one to get started, one good for, for getting started. Um, and then we will apply that for application and process in your work during the course and for the exam. And this will be the vast majority of the hours that we dedicate in this course. These two parts will take most of the time. And then we will also say and experiment a little bit with what's called behind the WIMP paradigm. So you, do you know what is WIMP? What means for WIMP? Not even cinema and media engineering? 
window, that's the right. Not images, icons. Window, icons, menu, pointers. It's the classical structural element of every desktop computer operating system. So windows has windows, clearly. Icons to identify files, to identify programs. Uh, menu, you open menu, contextual menu, etc. And pointers because you use a mouse. So everything that is post-WIMP is something that doesn't fall in these four uh, terms, such as you have, some of you have on, on, the, on the desk a post-WIMP device with a post-WIMP interface. The smartphone, do you have a mouse in the smartphone? You don't have a pointer in the smartphone, right? You still have icons, you still have menus, sort of, a window, it's debatable, it depends on the definition that we give, but that is still post-WIMP. Other example of post-WIMP paradigm, it's written there, but other example, I mentioned one before. Yeah. Virtual reality is definitely post-WIMP, you don't, well, you maybe have window, you want to build windows, but typically you, you don't, you don't use a mouse, for sure, um, and also augmented reality because you, you build in the, in, the, in the field, but also here is a list of tangible, uh, and also interaction with AI. Think about uh, Siri, Google, uh, Hey Google, etc. That's vocal user interface, that's not window. You don't have pointers. Etc. So all of these are post-WIM paradigm. We will see a little bit during the lecture and a little bit more during the course, not in lectures. So the course topic, uh, at a glance, will be more of this, these, hmm? that map the, uh, the table that we have uh, before. Uh, so again, the introduction to HCI is this, is today. Then we will uh, work with need finding that, as the name say, is how to find needs. Hmm? So needs from people. Uh, then we will work on how to define, how to synthesize these needs and some tasks. Then we will work on prototype, design guidelines, principle, heuristics, models, theoretical or not, to describe humans and the, the interaction with system. Then we will speak about evaluation, an expert evaluation that is the heuristic evaluation, and a non-expert evaluation that is the usability testing. And then in the end of the course, we will also speak about some other advanced interaction. So that is the plan. Um, and the good things about plan is that you can change them if they don't work, but at least we have a plan. And this is the plan. Um, so more, Simpler things, we have a course website that you should already know about it, uh, that will have the schedule of the course, currently is still in progress, but at a certain point you will have the full schedule with link to slides, laboratory text, deadlines, etc. Uh, all the classes will be video recorded, like this one, and the classes will be put, the videos will be put in the Portale della Didattica and on YouTube in that playlist uh, link here. And we will also use GitHub as a repository for the material and also for um, your work group at a certain point. Mm -hmm. And so actually all the slides, exercise, et cetera, on the website links to the, to the GitHub repository. So the, the content, the main point of content is GitHub. Uh, so we have an organization with repositories in this moment. Uh, for communication, you know, probably that we will use Telegram this year uh, due to, we were used to use Slack, but they did some changes in the free plan um, that makes difficult to use it during a, a course, a semester long course. So we try Telegram uh, because we, otherwise in Slack we lost uh, the history after 90 days. So if you write something today, 
I can read it after for 90 days and then I will not be able to read what you write today. So for a semester long course is not very good. Um, so we will use Telegram for, for this. Um, so 100 of you are already on the, on the group. Um, if you are not, you can join at that link. Uh, we will try to use it for quick communication. Like the room for the class changes, so we don't have classes, or the slides are online, something like this, like news from us, but you can also use it for questions, let's say public questions, or if you need a team member, uh, when we create the groups, uh, etc. You can publicly write there. You can write also privately to us as teacher, either on Telegram uh, with a direct message or via emails or by speaking with us in person uh, here or in the lab. Uh, then I will um, I set up these student hours. Um, that basically are moments for you if you have something to say, privately or not, outside of the hour of the course. Mm -hmm. So it could be an opportunity for, you have a problem with the course, you have a problem with the, your team, your team. Uh, you want some clarification, you're looking for a thesis, you're looking for an advice, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever is every Wednesday at uh, 10 a.m. in the morning for one hour, uh, in my office, that is at the third floor of the Department of Computer Engineer. And if you want to attend, you just need to book a slot uh, on that calendar. It could be an individual, a group, three friends, as you feel, nobody, as you feel comfortable. Uh, if you don't, cannot make in that hour for any reason, and you need to speak with us, with me, uh, you can also clearly contact me on other channels and we can meet either in person, again, in my office or remotely if you are not here for whatever reason. So let's come back to the course and the methodology. So the course methodology is both project-based and problem-based. This means that you will mostly learn how to apply things and to do things in a project, in teams, and also the project work start from user needs. Not your ideas, not your needs, but somebody else's needs. Hmm? That you will elicit and get, in, and get from the need finding phase that we will cover hmm? uh, next week in, in the class, and then you will also have some lab hours to, to do that. So the characteristic of this project is that it will be developed during the semester. And we will make time during the lab hours to allow you to work on the project. So essentially, lab hours are just for you working on the project. They will not be enough to complete the project. I can already tell you but at least it's an help that we can provide. You will have to work outside of those hours to complete the projects. That's to make clear things. And we will help you to develop this project step by step. We will give you assignments. Like this week, let's do step A. We will have a check after, and then you can do step B, et cetera. Um, and these checks, are the way in which we provide feedback to you. So what, what's the problem here? The problem is that if you develop a project in an iterative way, so let's say that we you start with interviews and you have to extract the user needs and then you have to build an application and you did the interviews totally wrong, you will continue with the course. So week two of the course, you make a mistake. Nobody checks with you, and you had a very bad starting point for the rest of your project. So we want, and you don't learn also, because you did something wrong thinking that is good. So what we do in this course, and we also always has, has done, have done in this course, is to give you feedback. So after each step, 
almost after each step, there will be a feedback moment, which we speak with you and tell you, yes, this is good, this could be improved, this is not understandable, etc. So that you can proceed with the next step of the project better, hopefully, than before. So you know immediately that you are making things right or not, and how to change direction if it's not right, and how to re revise what you did if it's really terrible. So this feedback is to help you learn better and create better, follow better the process and create better uh, application, better solution in the end. And all of this is called feedback, is not called grading. We are not giving you any score during the course. It will be evaluated at the exam time. So that will be a really feedback for you. If you listen to the feedback, you improve your work, you probably get a better score in the end. If you don't listen to the feedback, you don't want the feedback, you are old enough to live with the consequences of this. So you probably will not improve the score if you make mistakes. So this feedback is, again, here for, the, for you to help you with the project, to make better steps time after time. Again, no grading, just feedback. The grading is at the exam. So the course organization, you already probably know this, is three hours per week of lectures, like this. Uh, we will have then three slots of laboratories in a room that is room 2T, that is here in this corridor. Um, and we'll have three slots because 170 students. So we will have three slots. Um, laboratory will start next week. This week we will use the first two hours for doing lectures, since we lost yesterday and we will lose other holidays. It's on Friday. Wrong column, yes. Absolutely. It's definitely on Friday. So imagine that they are in the right column. I will fix it after. So lecture are Monday and Tuesday today and yesterday, like today and yesterday, and labs will be on Friday afternoon. Right time, wrong day. But again, except this week we will do labs. This week on Friday, 2.30 p.m., room to tea, we will have three hours of lectures, only for this week. Um, So this year, people that did the schedule for the courses had a very creative approach to, to the scheduling. So uh, check the classroom for, in which we do lectures, because twice they will change. They will not be here in R1B on Monday and 7T on Tuesday. They will change only two times. So one is next week, by the way. So always look at the schedule on the, on the Polytechnic website that is updated with the right room. Otherwise, you came here, you would find other people, and you can stay, whatever they do, or you can find the right room. So check at, this, at the classroom in the, in the schedule of the, of the Polytechnico because twice they will change. So classes, well, in person, the rooms often will have uh, power outlets at the desk, like here in theory. Uh, when we change rooms, it's not always possible. They will be, in any case, video recorded and made available as I said before, and for this, let's say, always for this creativity and for um, various holidays that we have, we will lose one or two classes that we need to, uh, to do, actually. So in this moment, 
we manage things to just lose one class, and that class will be a video that we will put online, you have to watch it, totally asynchronous, and then in the next lecture, after that, we will dedicate 10 minutes, whatever, at the beginning of the class to have any discussion and question and answer on that lecture. So right now we identify one class that we need to, to, to do, and that will be easy to do as a video lecture because it's pretty practical and hands so on on a tool, so it's something that uh, it's appropriate for uh, a synchronous video lecture. Because otherwise we need to find a moment in which all of you, or most of you, need in this schedule. So um, that's easier. Uh, laboratories, starting next week, October 7. If it's Friday, it's October 7. Otherwise, it's the Friday of that week. Uh, again, also that will be in rooms with power outlets. And again, that will be for group activities with the text of the activity always to release some day in advance. We aim at one week in advance. We will try to pu publish the text of the labs one week in advance. Sometimes it will be possible, sometimes less, but that's our goal, standard, let's say. And also in this case, we will lose one lab. Uh, and that needs to be done in person. So once we have the three slots up and running, every person in the slots will find a moment to, to, to do this lab uh, somewhere. So instead of finding a moment for 170 people, we will find a moment for one third of that number, three times. So probably it will be easier. So laboratories, we would like to set up laboratories as what we call here design studios. So what is a design studio? A design studio is a workplace for people engaged in conceiving, designing, and developing something, a product, an object, something. So not classical laboratories in which you do things, and if it happens, you can ask questions to the teacher that is here doing other things but moments in which the teacher is there to support the group. Always in this mentality of uh, feedback, not only in those checks, but also intercepting problem before you spend hours in a wrong direction. Hmm? So actually that moment should be that the teacher is virtually or hypothetically sitting down with you as a group and working with you for a while, hmm? like an expert running in the room, but not uh, information keeper or provider. Mm -hmm. So each team uh, will be in the same slot, working with the same teacher for the entire semester. We have three teachers, three slots. Every team will always speak with one teacher for the project. That's to ensure that the design decision that all the decisions that you make are reasoned with one person and not contested by another one that doesn't know maybe the half an hour discussion that you had with the teacher. Again, a moment in which you can design something together and reflect on what you do, on the choice you make. And we will have two main activities with the stud studios, with the labs that are identical of the three slots. Uh, one will be what we call the assignments, that is the actual work that the teams does for moving forward with the project, and the other ones are checks. Mm -hmm. So we will use the labs hour to check with the progress of the groups. Mm -hmm. So for instance, we will have uh, next week the, the lab about um, need finding, and the week after the check about need finding during the lab hours. One group one teacher at a time. And each of these lot, and this is something new this year, um, also to motivate why you see only one teacher, always one teacher, is that each slot we will have a specific team. 
and all the project must fall in the general team and specialize it. And another constraint is that all the slots needs to have more or less the same number of assigned teams. One third of students per slot. Uh, so we will have three teams this year. This is an experiment, totally an experiment. And the three teams will be first, the digital well-being, second, augmented reality and virtual reality for education, and third, humans meets AI. And all of these are mostly post-WIMP application area. So what we means for this team? And so in the slides you have a brief description, who is the teacher for that specific team, and some example that you can find on, on, on the internet. So digital well-being is all, is that field, that, that, the topic that focus on how to balance people, usage of technology in general. So how to not overuse or use meaningless the phone, or not to waste hours on Instagram or TikTok. That things is called digital well-being. And you have a various example here. Forest is an application for smartphone you can download. There is this Inge that is actually a dating app, but the goal of the dating app is for you to stop using it at a certain point because you fall in love with somebody so you don't need the app anymore. So that's the goal. So like a social media that you stop using at a certain point because it's useless for you. And also Google has some digital well-being experiments, small ideas that they put on a website. So this is the digital well-being team. That is Friday, the first lot. The second slot is augmented reality and virtual reality for education. So how we can apply or create educational experience in augmented and virtual reality for having people learn better. And also here there is three examples, uh, two are applications, one in, is then uh, a web page. And the third one is humans meets AI, that is how people better, how an intelligent agent, how an intelligent system can augment, not to replace, but augment human capabilities to serve their needs. Hmm? So these are, and also here there are three examples. These are broader teams. During the first, you have to choose one. During the, the first assignment, you will start from this large team and you'll try to shrink down. And in the second assignment, you will try from this reduced version of the team to uh, come out with a project idea that is within this team. Hmm? So just to make you an example of a team that's not here. So let's imagine that the team is held that's not here. You can imagine health on different perspectives, in different domains. Nutrition, physical activities, mental well-being, disease management. So all of these are possible specialization of health. And all of these brings some problems within them, for maybe for some specific people, some specific part of the population. And that will be the goal that we, we will start having for the first step, understanding which are these needs. And then maybe you discover that with the people that you speak with, they have problem around nutrition, around setting up um, a food plan for the week, not for spendless money or spendless time, just for serving a, a specific health-related need, a disease or something like this allergies. So you focus on the nutrition um, and the food planning for health, and then you devise your project about helping people, specific 
specific category, let's say, of people to uh, support the, to better create food plants. So that, that's an example, it's not the, uh, the golden standard, but it's just to say how to pass from this general theme to a specific project. And we will spend two assignments to do that. Because again, the projects start from user needs. So we want to understand which are the user needs within a specific theme, within a specific topic. And then you can refine, you can bring your perspective, but starting from the needs. Um, the second thing is um, that uh, these three teams, especially the, the second and the first, and uh, the third, uh, speak about AI, speak about virtual reality. Um, so maybe some of you could be worried, oh, I need to implement a voice assistant in my application. We'll need to. Or I will need to have a fully flagged functioning virtual reality system or augmented reality system. And that is a reasonable worry, but I can already start you telling that is no. Hmm? Because if you remember what we did, what, what we say one hour ago or something like this, this is a process in which you prototype things. So a prototype is not a product. A prototype can have things that are fake, that are, are coded. If you build an uh, augmented reality system for understanding how to put IKEA furniture in this room, you will need to have in the, in the project all the IKEA catalog. You will need three pieces of furniture, probably. It's enough to demonstrate the usefulness and the usability of the application. And you probably don't care if, it, if you put a, a bed here on the table instead of on the floor, because you have control on the application and you have control on what happens. Because it's a prototype, you want to demonstrate a point, you don't want to sell it after three minutes or give it free after three minutes. So some things will be real, done in a realistic way, and some other things that are more difficult to, done, to be done or impossible to be done will be faked. So will not be real. So that is not something that you should worry too much. Teams. Teams, three, four people. Four is nicer. Um, you are responsible for forming teams. We don't want to form teams for you. We can help if needed, but we are not forming teams with four random people without having the four people speaking before, at least. And teams cannot be changed during the semester. Um, and I, I needed to write this, even if it should, shouldn't be written, probably, in general. But in, in case of issues, uh, we, among teammates within a team, speak. Talk with us. We are here to help. That's the main point of all of this is that here, we are here to help you, not vice versa. So if you have issues within a Teams that happens, not very often, but happens, don't tell me that you have an issue after the exam. Because in that moment, it's too late to do anything. Tell me as soon as the issue arises, or if you, don't, if you aren't able to, to fix it, to solve it in any reason. And we will find a way to move forward or to solve the issue, okay? Yes, no, okay. Because it happened in the past, last year happened that a team told me that they had an issue after the exam, when we already had the vote registered. And that's the, the wrong moment in which to tell that you have an issue because we cannot do anything. Not even during the exam, after. So it's not something that we can do anything about in that moment, okay? So the sooner, the better. 
So about the exam. The exam will consist in three parts. Let's say there is no written exam. There is nothing to study for. The exam is the project. The exam is the activity that you do mostly during the semester. So there is no theoretical part to study. There is no written exam to prepare. Just the project to do. So we will ask you to work a little bit more during the semester and less clearly before the exam because you don't have anything to prepare, almost anything to prepare. So the three parts will be, well, the project development that you do in teams during the semester. Uh, and in that phase, at the end of that phase, you will need to produce a final report describing the entire process that you follow hmm, according to five group assignments that are five labs, let's say, that we are going to, to give you, plus the sources of the prototypes. So if the prototypes is in code, the source code of the prototype. If the prototype is on paper, the, the picture of the piece of paper, the scan of the piece of paper in which you draw your prototype, etc. So the sources, whatever it is. The digital version of the sources, whatever it is. Then we, and this count up to 20 points. Then we will have one individual assignment. So something that's not for the entire group, but it's counted for the individual. That is up four point, and it is still related to the project. It's just an activity that you can do individually, that is the heuristic evaluation, in which every, each of you will evaluate another group project. So that could be individual, applying, evaluating another group project. So everybody will evaluate at least one other group project and will give the results of the evaluation to, to the group to proceed with the next step. And it is individual. We will make time during a lab to do all the heuristic evaluation. So all the heuristic evaluation can happen during a lab hour. You don't need to, find, to make time to do the heuristic evaluation outside of those hours. And then at the exam, the day of the exam, uh, you will have an oral discussion as a group on the project for other maximum eight point. And this sum, sums up to 32. And the projects are valid for this academic year. That means that by September 2023, by the end of the session of September 2023, you will either have to pass the course or to change the course in the next um, study plan or to re re follow the course one more time because you love it a lot. Uh, evaluation criteria, effort, originality, complexity, clarity, uh, capability to incorporate the feedback, individual contribution, etc. Nothing really strange. Uh, project development, we already said that project will be step by step, built mostly during the lab hours, based on it finding within the chosen team, iteratively, and we will give you what we call the assignments, that are the text of the lab, that will start during a lab hour are the first three will be followed by checks during the lab hours, but they will be evaluated at the exam again. You can make every error you want during the course. Nobody will take into consideration for the score. If you fix it or amend it in some way, clearly. So we planned all the assignment and checks. Uh, you will notice that the schedule is quite uh, fast, um, especially for some of that, but it's doable for a group of four people. Um, and these are the six assignments. So the first assignment will start week two, so next week. 
the check will be the next, the week after, so we'll have one week to complete the assignment, and it will be about the first part of the finding. Then we will have another week for the refinement of that and the project definition. So after assignment two, you will have the project idea to get started with your project. You end the understanding part, and you start the prototyping part. Indeed, the assignment three, that lasts two weeks longer, is the first iteration, a low prototype, a low fidelity prototype, and its evaluation. As all of these will be group-based. Assignment four will be another iteration. The medium fidelity prototype from what you learned in the first iteration. So in the first iteration, you create a prototype on paper, on a piece of paper with pen and paper, with no color, with nothing. You evaluate it, and you will learn something from the evaluation. Something will be good, something will not, and you will apply that knowledge to the next prototype. That is the medium fidelity prototype that will last other two weeks, two weeks in which you can use the lab hours to work with the teachers. Then assignment five is the one individual. So in the week 11, that I don't remember when it is, in week 11, you have to give the medium fidelity prototype to people, and they will do the heuristic evaluation on your prototype. So the medium fidelity pro pro prototype needs to be completed by the lab of that week, even five minutes before, but by that lab, should be ready. Hmm? So you pass the prototype, the link of the medium fidelity prototype to, the, to these people, they will evaluate you, they will speak together, and will give you a summary of the evaluation. Summary of the evaluation as a group that you will take, and again, will iterate for the third and last time hmm? with a high fidelity prototype. That is the prototype you create in code. Finally, with 12 out of 13. So we are really at the end of the course, the last two weeks of the course. And assignment six is something that you start uh, in two labs during the, the course, and you end one week before the exam date, you decide to give the exam. So if you decide to give the exam the first session, it's one week before the date in the first session. If you decide to give the exam in September, it's the first week before the exam date in September. So you have a month to complete this. And together with this, you have to create this final report. We will give you a template as soon as possible. This is new, so we need to create that. And this template of the final report will describe all the uh, five uh, assignments except the individual one, clearly. So this is just to, to visualize the, the assignment and checks. Hmm? So the first assignment, the, the half week in color is because we want to release the text before. Hmm? So we, you will receive, maybe towards the end of this week, the text of the first assignment. So if you want to start thinking about it, you can. And this applies to all the others. And so you see that the first tray has a check with teacher, the fourth and the fifth doesn't have a check because it's the heuristic evaluation that is the check on the, on the middle fidelity, hopefully, and also the, the last one doesn't have a check because the check is the exam in that case. Hmm? But in any case, you will work with teachers in rooms, so hopefully it will be a, a discussion always, every week, not just a moment in time in which you check that everything is good. As I was saying before, the project completion level at the end will be a high fidelity prototype in code, but again, not the final product. Not something that you put on the, on the Apple Store or the Google Store or on the web to freely use. So that application, just to make clear, also in relationship with the team, is not required to implement the standard and trivial, yet important, features 
such as the sign up, the login. You can assume that your user is already logged in if you need that. And you can have a switch user button that will log out and log in another person. But you don't need to implement all the logics that are related to the login, the logout, the registration, etc. This also means that some difficulty features, as I was saying before, can be faked or are coded in the application. The difficult or the standard, clearly not the one that demonstrate your point. And notice that here I never speak about technology on PowerPost. How do you create the project? In which technology do you create the project? Any guess? It's not written, so any guess? Or which could be the answer? You will need to. So at a certain point, you will need to pick a piece of technology to create the project. But why is it not written here to you? It is? Can you repeat? You are free to choose. Exactly. And say it another way, we don't care. As soon as it fills the project and solves the needs, you can, uh, for instance, speaking to computer engineers specifically, you can use what you learned from Web Application 1. It's enough, mostly enough for doing all of this. You, you know how to program in Android, and you end up doing a mobile application for whatever reason. You can go with that, with that technology. You want to learn React Native? Feel free. Clearly, our suggestion would be to, to build on things that you know, not to add other things to do during the semester, but it's actually up to you. As soon as it solves the problems that you want to solve and does what you want to do, you can pick whatever technology and you are able to demonstrate that live. In the oral discussion, you can take whatever technology you prefer. Because again, the focus is on how people use this, not how technically it's done. You have all the other courses well, maybe not all, but most of other courses for this. Uh, finally, so project, individual assignment, uh, that is for project 20 points, individual assignment four points, oral discussion, the last eight points. The oral discussion is the one that happens at the exam date, or if you are too much in the days of the exams. And it works that each group, all members present and all members presenting came to the oral, to the exam, give a brief introduction to the project, just to contextualize what they're speaking about to all the teachers in that moment, give a demonstration of the final prototype, the one high fidelity, a live demonstration, which covered the main feature, and again, everybody in the team speak. And then we can ask some questions about what we saw, about what we, you said, about what you write in the reports, etc. And that's it, that's the sum. Introduction, without slides, without anything, just a few words of introduction, demonstration, of your final prototype, answering some questions. And during the demonstration, you should be able to demonstrate not only that it works, because also the all of shame application works, but it works according to, it's well reasoned how it works. And these three parts, the most crucial part, the critical part, 
is the demonstration. Not because you are not able to run an application, uh, but because typically mm, Teams doesn't prepare the demonstration. They just came there and show you things randomly. So the demonstration, as a warning, must be prepared. It's, it's the thing that you need to prepare for this oral discussion. What you are going to show, which is the story you're going to tell us while demonstrating that your application is useful, can be used, and is, is usable. In all of these, keep in mind that we already have read the reports. Some of us knows your project probably well, because we followed you for the entire course. And we also had a look at the final prototype code. So there is no need to cover those parts. No need to repeat things that you already written, and no need to repeat to show the code, because if you want, we can look at it. We will give you uh, two GitHub repositories for each team, one for the code, so you're going to use it at the end of the course, and one for the report, intermediate material that you need to provide before the checks. That could be one link, that could be pictures, or could be short text that you can then copy and paste in the final report, clearly. So it's not work that is lost. Finally, the assignment zero. So how you build groups and when. So group composition needs to be done by October 5, so two days before the, the first lab. So that with, uh, at October 6, we can say these are the groups that went, they go in this lot and not the other. And in this form, we ask you for three information, four information, a group name. We don't have a project name now, so we have a group name, whatever you want. Uh, four people, ID, student ID, surname, name, GitHub username, and email for each of the maximum four, minimum three team members but four is better. And the two preferred lab slot or teams that are the same. So the form will ask you which is the most preferred lab slot in one question, and another question, which is the second choice. And one option of the second choice will be we only can be in the lab in that specific slot because of conflict. That's an option for the second choice. We keep these preferences that you give us. These are not choices, these are preferences. And we will try to respect your preferences as much as possible and assign you in the three slots according to your preferences. Sometimes it will not be possible, because if you, all of you choose the first lot, it's not possible to have all of you in the first lot. Maybe we can replicate the topic, but not the, the time. So you need to, we need to distribute you more or less equally between the slots. So if all the people that are enrolled in this course apply is submit a form, it's 15 groups per slot, more or less, 14, 15. If they're, if they're less, we have more time for, for working with you. Finally, we don't have a book that cover everything in this course, but we use these books as references. Some of these are available here in the library, some others are directly uh, fundamental books in the field. So just to tell you which are. Uh, the first one is Human-Computer Interaction by Alan Dix, that is a professor in the UK, and others. That is quite old and cover a lot of, of human-computer interaction. It's quite old because it's, it's of 24. 
Uh, the second one is the sixth edition in uh, 2016, so slightly newer, uh, from professor mostly in the US. And uh, we will also mention Schneiderman, that is the first one, a few times in the course. Then we use less these other two books. One is more research oriented, uh, and the other one is about more the design. We will use less these two books for the material. And these instead are not academic books, not textbooks, but books that you can read if you want. Uh, so the first one is the design of the things that in Italian is called La Caffettiera del Masochista. I'm sorry for those that doesn't speak Italian. You can understand why it's called in this way in Italian. Look at the picture, don't speak, look at the picture. Why it's called? Because you cannot do anything that is not burned yourself with that. It works, it's another example of thing that works. It, it does coffee or tea or hot water, it, does, it works. You cannot drink it without burning yourself, but it works. Hmm? So it's, in Italian, they, they use this name, La Caffettiera del Masochista, in English it's called The Design of the Things. Uh, it's quite old book, revised in 2013. The other one is a very nice book with a lot of pictures and comics. So if you, if you want to spend money or to do something and get this, is, is nice. And it's uh, a common sense approach to web and mobile usability. Uh, Steve Krug is a usability expert, a professional usability expert that works with companies for, and this is a book to read. It's a, actually, it has a lot of examples, a lot of pictures, etc. So it's a nice book to, to have. To, but these are not textbooks, these are not academic books. Are books that you can buy in any bookshelf uh, in the city probably, and also online. Okay, any questions? Yeah. Which? Can you repeat? We try to follow your preference. So if you say that you prefer first choice is lot one and second choice is lot three, we will try as much as possible to give you either slot one or either slot three. So that is the criteria. Your preference win. Then at certain points is all of you say slot one or three, it's random. Or we can reach out to some of you asking if we can put it in the in the third choice, that is the one that you didn't select. Um, but more than this is not possible. Any other questions? Okay, so we meet again on Friday, 2.30 p.m. in this corridor. Have a nice lunch. <laughs>